Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name is Jason. You're watching Old Car Guy, and today we're going to be showing you a few modifications that we've been doing to Dale when we come back. So I wanted to fill you guys in on a little something that uh, I've been dabbling with on Dale here. And you guys all know that you've been watching this channel for a while now that we have got an engine and transmission ready, well not ready, uh, but another one that we're going to be putting in to uh, old Dale here. So we're putting a four speed instead of a three speed transmission and my engine block and heads are out to the machine shop right now as we speak. Uh, they should be back hopefully today or tomorrow. So in the meantime, what I did was I posted this engine and transmission on Facebook Marketplace for sale. And lo and behold, people want this engine. Now I have determined that this 350 does have camel hump or double hump heads on it as well. I'm not sure what the casting number is, so I don't know if it's the performance ones that everybody's looking for. Uh, but nevertheless, they should be better performing than a stock head on a 350 and it does have the four barrel intake. Now, people keep asking me, well, what is the mileage on it? And I say, well, it's 80,000 miles. That's what's on the truck. The truck is all original. You guys saw it when I first picked it up. I have no reason to believe, based on the condition of the paint, the condition of the frame, the condition of everything else, that this is not an original mileage truck. So, today, I've got somebody showing up here at the shop. They want to hear it run, which is great because, you know, the fact that it's still in the truck, you can hear it run. There's another couple of guys who want to come on the weekend and I woke up this morning to yet another text. So the only trick with this is I'm not ready to yank it out just yet because I don't have my other engine built and what I want to be able to do is make it a weekend project to be able just to yank this setup and put the new one in. So I'm hoping that if I can get an interested party that they can at the very least give me a down payment to hold on so that they get the first refusal when the time comes to yank that engine out. Otherwise, I'm not going to uh, save them uh, because you know how that goes. Somebody says, well, let me know when you got it ready and give me a call. So you, you get it ready, you call them and well, they're not interested anymore. So you got to strike while the iron's hot. If somebody wants this, they're going to pay for it up front and then we'll get it yanked out when the time comes. So we're only talking about a week or so, maybe a two at the most. So that's the story on the engine. Let me get the truck up in the air and we'll show you a couple of other modifications that we've been working on to try and settle how this thing sits. So as most of you know that you've been following the channel for a while now, we were having some issues getting the rear to sit level with the front. We started taking measurements and the whole right side of the truck passenger side sits a little bit lower than the left. So what we thought we would try and do is we thought that we would try and manipulate how this front spring hanger mounts on the frame. Let me get a light and I'll show you. So up here you can see where it mounted originally because it's not covered in paint. That's where the factory hole is there and there's one down here. So what we did was we in fact lowered this almost two inches on the bracket and effectively only gained about three-eighths, maybe half an inch in height on the back. We are trying to get this up. And what we determined after frigging for about two hours yesterday is that we think the spring on the passenger side and the rear, uh, you know, being original, is weak and weaker than the driver's side. So it's causing this back right corner to sag a little bit more than the other side. So no matter what we do to manipulate that front spring hanger, it's not changing a whole lot but what we did do was we changed just this one at one point set the truck down and it lifted up this corner which in turn puts the front driver's side down and almost levels the entire truck so what i'm thinking that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take that spring hanger we're going to put it back in the stock location and eventually uh, pick up some new leaf springs to get this thing sitting level uh, in the back so that is going to be a project likely for probably closer to the end of the spring once we get the drivetrain all looked after and all the little stuff. Uh, so that's something to look forward to is replacing those rear springs. Another thing that we've determined is that since we've lowered this truck, 
The lower ball joint is now closer and the lower control arm to the bottom of this 15 inch rim. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but we had to trim that bottom ball joint or control arm so that we could spin the wheel and not have any rubbing on that. So one of the things that we've determined as well is that we're not going to be able to make too much as far as hard lock turns with these 15 inch wheels on there because when you turn it, it's going to come up and hit the side of the control arm as well. And as you guys know, 18 inch wheels is likely the plan for this truck. So that's going to be something that we're going to have to do before we put too many miles on it uh, because I don't want that becoming much more of an issue. Also, you can see some wetness on that caliper and the reason is is that brake hose seems to be leaking at the fitting. Now, when we were putting this on, I did have to bend that a little bit to uh, make sure that it would fit around that spindle. And I think what we've done was we have weakened where it mounts into that banjo fitting. Therefore, having to replace the hose, well, guess what? Some of you guys probably already know that I've got hoses already uh, to replace on this thing. And again, it was one of those things I wanted to wait till I got it out to the shop. So it is gonna be a project we'll do while the truck is out here. Um, it just won't be right away. Uh, we're gonna look after that probably over the next couple of weekends. I really wanna get this engine and transmission set up, looked after and get this thing back on the road. So that is it. That's where we stand with Project Dale to date. Uh, I'll give you more updates. I'll let you know if the engine and transmission sells, that's gonna put a huge chunk of change back into the budget and help us afford those bigger 18 inch wheels and the tire package that we're going to be putting on this likely from Detroit Steel Wheels. So just a quick update to this video as I'm getting ready to head home and edit I get the phone call that buddy who wanted the engine and transmission I should say one of the five guys that was interested in buying the engine and transmission out of Dale has committed he's on his way out cash in hand so the engine and transmission is officially sold in dale it's going to help pay for the new build up on the engine and transmission that we've been talking about all along so just wanted to give you guys that update and uh, to make reference for the possible tiny bit of clickbait you may have seen in the thumbnail sorry guys gotta give you somehow don't forget the Car Guy and Six Fan show alternates every week from my channel to Straight Six Fan, and we sometimes even have guests. We're just a bunch of car guys talking cars, and we'd like to have you guys in the chat and join us. If you don't know who Straight Six Fan is, I'm going to put a link right up here so you can go over to his channel, subscribe to him. That way you get notified every time we go live on his channel. So keep in mind, we alternate back and forth. Thursday evenings, 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. Hope you can join us. And as always, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.